So this one is feeder circuit and we should start then by sketching it. And so if you recall, our equivalent circuit shows that we have a source voltage, which is very often given Vs. Uh, we include a single resistance value to represent the resistance of feeder conductors. We'll include our load as a box. Uh, I don't use a resistor symbol there because it's likely to be anything but. Uh, if it's a lighting load, yeah, possibly, right? Just a resistance or a resistor. Uh, so then this is our load over here. And we have then the voltage drop across the load, VL, added to the voltage drop across feeder conductors, VF, is equal to the applied voltage, VS over there, Kirchhoff's voltage law. And because this is a series circuit, uh, all of these uh, or both of these components, I suppose we say, gets the same current, which we'll just call our load. You can call it IT if you wish, but okay. So uh, now our given our given information: 23 kilowatts is our load over there. So of course that's a power value. 23 kilowatts uh, supplied from a 240 volt source. Uh, the distance between the load and the source is 250 feet, and so you can put that on your diagram if you wish. And be careful about the distance and the length, of course, right? So the distance between the load and the source is 250 feet. Now that means that, remember, there's two conductors, one to bring the power over, or the current, or the whatever, over to the load, and one to bring it back. So that means the length of wire that we got in there is two times the distance, or 500 feet. So I'm going to make a note of that, because that one uh, is an easy mistake to make. And the voltage drop uh, is not to exceed 2%. Okay, What size of conductor should be used? What power is lost to the feeder? Okay, so now... When we say that the voltage drop is not to exceed 2%, that of course means 2% of the source voltage. And what it means is that the voltage drop in the feeder is at maximum 2% of the source voltage Vs, which means 0 0.02 multiplied by 240 volts. So the maximum value for VF is uh, four point. 8 volts. Okay. So remember KVL then uh, says that VS is equal to VF plus the voltage across the load. So that means then that the minimum voltage that should be applied to the load is well 98% of VS uh, or in this case, now Vs subtract Vf, and we have 240 volts, subtract 4.8 volts. Now, the reason why we want Vl is because we need the current in uh, the system, and we got the power uh, of the load, and so the voltage across it is necessary to do that calculation so 235.2 volts now that should be the minimum voltage applied to the load 
Okay, so then uh, from uh, P is equal to uh, V times I, I is equal to P divided by V. So I load, of course, is the power of the load divided by the voltage drop across the load. And we have 23 kilowatts or 23,000 watts divided by 235.2 volts. So the current that goes through this whole circuit is equal to, uh, and I, I said 97.7 uh, 9 amps for that and so you know again now uh, there, there wouldn't be a big issue with rounding that I guess to three significant digits uh, and so that is the load current now let's think about uh, what that means with respect to our sizing of RF here because we're going to pick out the size of conductors and so we're basing it on a resistance calculation and so now from Ohm's law right I is equal to V divided by R. And I'm just going to fix that there a little bit. We're going to say that from that, the resistance of the feeder is equal to the voltage drop across it. Uh, divided by the current through it, which of course is IL. And remember our maximum uh, voltage across the conductors was 4.8 volts. And we're going to divide that by the 97.79 amps. And so that now gives us a uh, resistance value. And that resistance value comes out to be 0 0.0491 ohms. And that is, remember, for 500 feet of conductors. Now, uh, so there's two ways now that we can uh, tackle uh, finding uh, the proper uh, size of conductor. I remember we're going to use the American wire gauge table to determine uh, what the conductor is and uh, now because we assume copper conductors right then uh, that means that uh, we can uh, use resistance is equal to rho times length divided by area and figure out what the area is uh, from the uh, calculation and compare that to the American bar gauge table. Uh, because rho, of course, we got that for copper. But, you know, uh, a, a slightly easier calculation because we got values in the American bar gauge table uh, for the resistance of a thousand feet of copper conductors uh, then we can use a little ratio here. And so basically what we're saying is that uh, RF we have and it is for 500 feet. And in the table we have numbers which we'll just call X, call it RX if you want, uh, and they are valid for 1000 feet. So you using this um, uh, ratio here and uh, cross multiplication, right, says that I can say that um, uh, I'm going to solve it for, for x, of course, is what I'm going to do, right? And so x is equal to a thousand feet. But that's a half zeros there, even though some they look like sixes. Uh, divided by 500 feet, which of course is 2, uh, multiplied by our value for our F, uh, which is 0 
four nine one ohms. Let's remember that 4.8 here was a maximum voltage. So this is a maximum resistance for RF. And so X comes out to be 2 times 0 0.0491, uh, which is then 0 0.0982, and that is ohms per thousand feet. And so remember now, we go up and pick, say, a uh, number from the uh, American War Gauge table uh, based on this value. And it being a maximum value means that you got to pick the one with the next lowest resistance. And so uh, if you go to uh, the American War Gauge table now, uh, we're going to say that uh, from the... Uh, AWG table, uh, the number we have uh, fits between sizes. Uh, zero and zero zero, which we will call one at and two at, and uh, so the result is I always choose the larger wire, and that would be the one with the um. smaller resistance right and so the one with the biggest area uh, so I always choose the larger wire size and so the larger wire size means therefore uh, the proper wire size is 2 watt because it has a bigger area now um, So that's number zero zero, uh, also called two at. So from the American wire gauge table, we find that uh, the actual. Uh, okay, so it gave me paused off there, but uh, we got the resistance right. Uh, the actual uh, resistance was um, point. Okay, I was going to try to blow that up a bit. No, it won't let me. The actual resistance is 0 0.0780 ohms uh, per thousand feet. And so, um, for 500 feet, uh, you know, the actual value. of RF will be 0 0.078 divided by 2. Uh, and so that gives us now the actual resistance of the wire that we've used in our feeder circuit. And that will be 0 0.039 ohms. Now, uh, we want to, uh, for the last part of the question, right, we were, we were asked to uh, to what size conductor should be used? The answer is uh, two watt or double zero. How much power is lost to the feeder? And in order to do that, we should find the actual uh, resistance of the feeder conductors for 500 feet of uh, number double zero. So it's 0 0.039 ohms. Okay, so we'll assume uh, that current uh, does not change. Okay, so assume. Uh, negligible, I'll say. Uh, yeah, so 
I think that's how we spell it. Uh, negligible change in current. And so if you try to actually calculate the change in current, uh, you know, you find out that uh, you ends up with two equations, two unknowns here, or a quadratic or something, and uh, so the solution becomes a bit tougher. And so, you know, the, the change in resistance is something that we should calculate. We'll assume a negligible change in current. And so that means that the current uh, is approximately 97.79 uh, amps. And so that gives us a... Uh, a power loss calculation and so I'll say therefore uh, the power lost in the feeder and we normally calculate that as I squared R so I load uh, squared I'm trying to say there I'm only making a mess out of that uh, so look just let me fix that for a second uh, I should have uh, I load squared there. Multiplied by the actual uh, RF value. And so, um, 97.79 amps. R squared uh, multiplied by 0 0.039 ohms and therefore uh, the power uh, lost to the feeder uh, comes out to be 373 watts and if you compare that to the lighting load of 23 kilowatts you should find that it's less than 2% right because two percent was our maximum voltage drop and so that should agree uh, and so the power loss to the feeder then was 373 watts and our wire size uh, double zero